the October update on a project we're digging a basement underneath Lee and Connie's house in Green Bay. The house was built with only a crawl space. We do the whole thing without disturbing anything outside the house. The material that we're digging out of the house, about 30 dump truck loads of clay and sand and broken concrete is going on the hall road. So left of the screen between that house and the fire hydrant that you really can't see very well from here. There's a reason for that, but anyway, there's a hall road in there and I'll show you that. Everything's going across the street. There's going to be a couple hundred trips with a tractor and a dump trailer. So what we did was we dug out the topsoil, this lawn, and put some 4x4 grids on top of planks and screwed them all together and laid that in so we can drive the tractor across his lawn without making any ruts or tearing up the black dirt. Then he can still rake and mow and whatever else he does and we can still haul no matter what the weather is. The material is going down into this gulch that he had against his house here. About a third of the material is the guy in the basement right now. In the distance you may see a wood retaining wall that's rotten. And this path will continue and go down there and backfill that wall. Material is coming out of a conveyor you see to the right. And because I'm in like mass excavation mode, digging out the uh, middle, there's quite a bit of material moving in a short time. I have to do this before I'm hoping Thanksgiving and weather hits. So I'm going into this tractor and dump trailer. It's interesting that tractor, there's a good chance that uh, I operated that thing when I was 16 years old, 50 years ago. I found a scrapyard and made uh, it running out of parts with uh, that and two other tractors. Then Dennis Anderson and I made this dump trailer out of some scrap parts scrounged around. It might seem unusual to back up with a dump trailer, but I'm going over a curb and down a hill and around a curve and through a winding path in the woods. I didn't want to do all that backing up. And then I have to turn around and back underneath this conveyor. So I rebuilt the tractor, put a dozer frame on and dozer blade. And I built a drawbar to hook the trailer to the front of the tractor. Then I can just drive where I'm going. And, uh, I can drive right to the edge. I'm dumping in front of me with my foot on the brake. I'm not backing up to an edge. After the mass excavation is done, or if it's a rainy day, I haul across the road in a small dumper here. It carries a half a yard. And it's uh, interesting that they would actually lift the bucket up four feet before it tips if that's what we needed to do. But I can go up and down that path and with the bucket dump, it's also a snowplow, so I can keep going. When the mass excavation is done, I'll, I'll divest the tractor and dump trailer and just use this because it'll come out in smaller batches. I dug a mine shaft in the back garage stall. All the material is coming out of this hole and the new material is going in and the new stairs will also be where this hole is. To your right, the outfit conveyor which brings up the trailer. You'll see an inclined conveyor and stairs going down. It's another view of the mine shaft. You can see the outfit conveyor, the handrails, the mine shaft that dug conveyors are hung in those four blades. Stairs going down, and that's the incline conveyor. I dump all the material in that hopper you see at the bottom. I'm standing here at the bottom of the stairs. To your left, you can see the old frost wall and footing, tar tile and stone, and what we're excavating underneath it. There's a shore they're holding that wall position because there wasn't room to leave enough, but otherwise, None of this digging is going on underneath anything that's holding any load. You can see I'm about probably 28 feet back in and under the house. And I'm slanting downhill as I go in case I have a water problem. But so far it's been all very dry. The mini excavator on your left is electric so it's doing all the shoveling. There's no fumes or very little noise. I'm uh, loading into that uh, blue Georgia buggy there that takes like one and a half wheelbarrow loads at a time. 
I'm recycling what gravel I can get. See the red ones are a new basement post. As I come to one, I shore it up, take the old post out, then dig down, put a new footing and post in. This thing is a power cart that I made so I could run the three uh, phase, which is an industrial current mini excavator off of household current, which is single phase. And as long as I had to mount that on something, I put it on top of a cart with a work surface. And this end has three drawers for tools. This mini excavator runs off of electricity, so there's no fumes and very little noise. I cut the ears off of one of those buckets, one of the two buckets that came with it, and turned around so it works like a shovel instead of a backhoe. In this picture, you can see the old floor, the gravel underneath it, and there's layers of clay and then sand. Sometimes it's real pure mason sand, and I can use that in the gravel to mix the concrete for the footings under the post. You see some bigger chunks of concrete laying there? That's the old post pads. When I get a pile of those, I'll put that buster on the mini excavator and break them apart. So I'm standing about in the middle of the cut right now. You can see the conveyor and the stairs in the distance, new basement post. We move the furnace to the side. Move the plumbing waste lines, those white lines. Mounted them to the wall. It's gonna be, when we're done, there'll be a window in the distant wall you see down there. And this will be all be underpinned. When home middle's out, what I'll do is take and dig out six feet wide underneath one of the walls, in the middle of the wall, and then dig it six feet deep, put a new wall and footing underneath that, straight under it, and then when that's cured, move over six feet and do it again. This excavation where I'm standing is about 12 inches above where the finished floor will be. I'm building a cart that will carry the concrete around the perimeter so I don't have to shovel any of it. The wall, its new walls weigh about 100,000 pounds. So we're going to dump it into a cart up on top of there and motor it around the house until we come to the end of the pour and then dump it in the wall without handling it. That waistline you see is the old uh, plumbing waistline that's abandoned. My plan is to dig out the whole middle. Everything except about a five foot perimeter along the walls, that's where the weight is. And do that and I'll be done with that, like I said, around Thanksgiving. That's the mass excavation I talked about earlier. Just pretty much bailing product. And then uh, I get rid of the tractor and trailer so I get my garage stall back. And when the weather, weather turns, I just cut underneath one wall and start out underpinning six feet at a time and then backing up six feet at a time, going back to where the concrete comes in to our right here. And I can do that in any weather. That up there is the front corner of the garage and the concrete will be loaded into that cart there. The cart's going to haul about a thousand pounds at a time. <laughs> 